This is part four in a series of videos in which I'm going through the development of a magnetic core memory system. It's to promote a book I'm about to release and the book goes through all of this in much more detail. But I thought I'd release these videos for anyone that's interested. It does make a very interesting subject and is quite a fascinating thing to uh, develop and, and have a look at and play with. So the first videos went through the basics of uh, what's referred to as square loop ferrite material and I showed a curve tracer output using uh, this particular core. Now one thing I would say here is that the curve tracer was showing the uh, voltage current trace of a conductor passing through a single core so the square loop reference is really relating to the behavior of the flux of the core, not of the current and voltage. So although you don't get a square trace on the curve tracer, the book does go into a lot of detail and the diagrams in there showing uh, how the flux behaves and uh, gives the uh, material its name of square loop. But the point is that the ferrite material um, can be pushed into one of two distinct magnetization states and that's what we make use of in the magnetic core memory system. So I demonstrated in the previous video how we could change the uh, magnetization state of this particular core. I don't know if you can actually see it, we've got a single core down here. Give a quick uh, close-up of that. So you can see there are four wires passing through it. In our final design we will combine the inhibit and sense lines but for the uh, purposes of this particular demonstration uh, I've got all four wires showing. In the next video we'll get rid of the um, inhibit sense pair and replace those with a single uh, wire um, but for this demonstration we'll keep them separate. So the first bit of electronics we need to develop is a driver to drive current through the uh, selection wires. Normally we have two selection wires uh, passing through the core, uh, the X and the Y. At the moment with this uh, setup I'm only driving the X wire uh, but I'm driving it with twice the current you normally would so the overall effect is the same as selecting this core in the memory system and the output we see on the scope will be the same. Uh, so what I've put together here is a uh, fairly high current bridge driver circuit. If you recall we need to drive current through the uh, conductor in both directions, uh, one for write and one for read. Uh, that's not the memory read and write functions, that is the core, uh, the, the ferrite core write and read function which I'll come back to later. Uh, so we have a full bridge circuit. We can't just have a bridge that is in one state or the other because we only want to send pulses of current through the conductor so we need to be able to turn the bridge completely off. So it's a bridge that allows us to select uh, current passing through in either direction and it also has to be able to switch um, inductive um, loads fairly quickly so it's fairly efficient and it is able to drive currents up to around 2 amps. Now we only need about 300 milliamps in our design so uh, it will easily handle uh, the currents that we will need it to. And this is the circuit that we're using in the final design. The IC on the left is just to square up the signal coming in from the uh, signal generator it's just to make sure it's a proper TTL signal so it's just a buffer. I'm feeding the um, signal generator signal into uh, one of the gates, it's a 74 LS04 and it's just to give us a, you know, a proper TTL output so we can be certain that we're driving it in the way that we would in a, a target system. The signal generator is set up to give us a pulse um, of one microsecond and that's uh, just to make sure that we can properly trigger um, the operation of the circuit. In the final uh, target system the pulse generation circuit will generate uh, pulses required to drive the overall system. It's a multi-step um, uh, process to uh, read and write a uh, magnetic core memory system 
and again we'll come to that in a later video but just for now uh, bear in mind that the one microsecond pulse width is because that's what we'll be using in the final design okay so we've got this put together I've got the output from the current driver circuit hooked up to our X line I've got the sense line connected to the yellow channel on the scope the green channel is set to look at the uh, control signal going into our uh, current driver circuit so when we trigger this um, what we'll capture on the scope is a step in the uh, green trace you'll see the pulse that's been applied to the current driver circuit and then the output from the sense line will show up on the yellow trace okay so I've got the power switched on and what we can do now is send a single pulse through the uh, drive selection uh, circuit and that will pass a pulse current through the uh, X wire and we'll pick up on the scope the output from the sense wire unfortunately I can't get everything onto the screen at the same time so I'm going to have to reach up and uh, trigger the signal generator but it's just going to send a single one microsecond pulse uh, into the driver circuit so I'll arm the scope and we'll trigger the signal generator and so what we can see on the scope is we have the green trace which is showing our uh, one microsecond pulse the scope set for 200 nanoseconds per division and um, the scale for the yellow trace the uh, sense wire output is 50 millivolts per division it's quite a small signal we're looking at and um, but what you can see is that there is a sharp spike when the um, the current is switched on there's a short delay because it does take um, a few nanoseconds for the uh, circuit to turn on but this spike is caused because of the coupling between the um, the drive select wire and the sense wire and a quick sketch on my Dave Cad Jr. system here and so the ring represents our core and although the wires are straight going through it they are effectively a single turn each in a transformer so because we have what is effectively a transformer when we apply the pulse of current to the drive circuit we of course get an immediate response on the sense wire because of the coupling, it's just basically a transformer at this point. Uh, and that's not really desirable because although we could use it like this, um, it's better if we could get rid of this initial spike. And the way we can do that is actually relatively simple. We have a one microsecond um, pulse here and the size of this spike uh, due to this coupling is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux which is proportional to the rate of change of current so if we slow down the rising edge of the current pulse that we're feeding into the selection wire it should um, reduce the size of this uh, spike that we're getting because the, um, the rate of change of flux will be accordingly reduced as well so it's quite easy to do that the way I've designed this circuit um, there is a resistor in here that's meant to be part of a, um, a filter and all I have to do is add the second part of that which is a capacitor so I'll get that put into circuit okay and so if we send another pulse through the system we can now see that that um, spike has been very much reduced we're still getting this hump that's not caused by the change of magnetization state uh, this is just still part of the coupling and the reason it's kind of wider and spread out is because um, this is showing the control uh, it's not showing the current through the wire the current is now rising much more slowly and when it gets to um, a certain point that's what will control our core magnetization but this hump is purely the coupling between the two okay so at the moment when we trigger the signal generator it's always passing current through in the same direction and because uh, as we went over in previous video once the core magnetization has been set for a particular current direction 
it won't flip state again until we reverse current. So what I can do is using this yellow wire is I can pass a current through the core in the opposite direction. Uh, I won't bother triggering the scope, this is just um, effectively the way we would write a value to the core, so I'm effectively now going to write a 1 to the core, which I've now just done, and if we now uh, send another pulse through the core, we should be able to read that one back and we should see the output on the sense wire um, that will be produced when the core flips back to the state it was in when this was uh, produced the first time. So we'll send another pulse and as we can see we're now getting this secondary uh, signal and that is the point at which the core is changing state. Now as I've said before when we do this um, because the core is changing state we're effectively deleting the information that we've programmed into it so if we try and read it again you can see that the uh, core does not change state again because it's already in the current uh, state required for this direction of current. Um, but if we program a 1 back into it, pass another current, we can see that once again we have a 1 stored. So this is how we're going to make use of the core as I uh, went over in the previous video. If we send a pulse of current during our read, then if no hump is detected, that's a zero, and we can do that as often as we want, and we'll get the same result. Um, but if we program a one into the core, we can see that once again, we get a one showing. So this circuit's working, it's doing what we want. We have the ability to um, control the direction of current being passed through the wire. So if we drive current in one direction then um, we effectively write data to the core and if we pass current through the other way then we read the data back using the sense line. So the final thing we'll look at in this video is um, what we looked at in the previous video is how to prevent um, data being written to the core when we don't want it. So when we select uh, an X and Y location within the memory, we effectively select all the cores for that particular byte. But we might not want to write ones to all the cores. So we need a way to prevent um, ones being written to the cores where we need to retain the zero value. And that's where the inhibit Y comes in. So I'll hook up the inhibit wire, we'll try this again and um, we'll get the same demonstration we had in the previous video of how to um, prevent our, or inhibit ones being written into the core. Okay, so I've got the inhibit wire hooked up and it's uh, connected so that when I pass a current through it by turning on the second channel of the bench supply it will inhibit our ability to write a 1 into the core. So we'll just demonstrate that. So I've got the current in the inhibit wire turned off and we'll do a read just to prove that the core is currently unprogrammed and as you can see there is no hump so nothing is stored in the core. We'll do a write of a 1. Remember that the inhibit wire is inactive at the moment so we'll read back the value and as you can see, we did successfully store a 1, which of course we've now destroyed by reading it. So what I'll do now is turn on the current through the inhibit wire. We'll try and write a 1 back to the core, and then we'll read it back and see what we get. So I turned on the current on the inhibit wire. We'll try and write a 1, turn the current back off, and we'll now try and read back the value we've written to the core. And as you can see, it's still showing zero. We'll try and write a one, this time with the inhibit current turned off. And we can see we are successfully getting a one. Inhibit current back on. We'll try writing a one again. Inhibit current off. And once again, we didn't write anything. 
So that's the first step in the electronics. Uh, we've got the ability to drive current um, through the wire in either direction using our drive circuit. Um, the reason I needed to keep this fairly simple uh, is because we obviously need 16 of these for our 8x8 array. So we need one for each of the X and Y wires. And um, so I can't go with a hugely complex circuit because um, you would obviously make the entire design way too cumbersome. Um, but this is quite a, a simple uh, design, it's just six transistors, a few resistors, a couple of capacitors, and it allows us to set the current required through the uh, selection wire, and it also allows us to control the rate at which that current uh, increases in the selection wire. And that gives us a very good output. So what we'll need to do in the next video is build a circuit that will enable us to detect this output. So what we're looking for here is to ignore this uh, first part of the output signal, which is the direct coupling that we always get, and we need to detect uh, this um, signal. Quite small, as I said, we're set here to 50 millivolts per division. And um, so in the next video, we'll look at putting together a circuit that allows us to reliably amplify and detect that signal and turn it into a digital output from the system that we can read into a latch.